Howdy there, folks. Welcome to another Train Sim World 3 video. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of enhancements and or mods uh, for the game, Train Sim World 3. Of course, you'll need uh, the appropriate DLC or add-ons to use uh, these mods and or enhancements. And this is just a small collection I've kind of gathered for the month of May 2023, which is now almost over. And we're almost fully in the throes of summer and unbearable heat where I live. Anyway, I'm totally looking forward to it. Anyway, so we got a couple to look at here. The first one up, we are currently on the Clinchfield Railroad. Uh, and this is by Luna Moon and NGC. And this is the gray SD40 and black F7 mod now this fully integrates into your standard clinchfield railroad timetable so you'll see a mix of about everything in here so generally by default it came with a gray uh f7 and a black sd40 now you can have the opposite of each and like i said they'll fully integrate into each or vice versa whatever so you'll see all kinds of different color and uh, liveries on crr now of course you're going to need the clinchfield railroad and that is it for train sim world um but anyway this one's pretty simple yet pretty nice as well so that's the standard uh, gray f7 we have sitting in the back there and this is the black variant which was done very nicely the colors look very good you still got some weathering and streaking and all that good stuff on there and uh, they look pretty darn good overall. Um, I kind of like the black F7 over the gray one. And then, of course, we have got the gray and yellow uh, SD40, which we have here in front of us, which by default, you only got the black one. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty neat as well. And again, it, it looks, you know, it looks like it came with the add-on. These, these paints uh, and textures look very damn good very nice job uh you know they look how they should look for the most part uh they should have the correct road numbers and all that good stuff as well as you know the the fawning uh for the you know the numbers and letters all that good stuff and uh they fully integrate so i'll show you what that means within the uh, menu here so we are now in the menu of course on the clinchfield railroad i clicked simply the timetable within the route and you'll see the two options naturally which is all we have for crr the uh, F7 and the SD40. So if you click on the SD40, you'll see two options here. You'll see the standard black one and the gray one, which is the new one. And they've all got the same timetabling. So you can use, you know, that as your lead engine. And then, of course, the F7, same deal. You've got the standard one here and then the black one here. And uh, that's it. It seems simple. Although it's not, it injects uh, some different livery and uh, some, you know, just some different color and variety, which is always nice in train sims. Train sim world, especially since it's fairly locked down for the most part. Uh, so that's pretty nice. And it's just a simple pack file. You slap it into your, uh, your DLC folder and that's it. It doesn't mess anything up that I found. Uh, it just adds to Clinchfield Railroad, which is pretty damn cool. So as you can see here, I've got the gray liveried SD40, uh, which, you know, loads up perfectly normal with the standard black ones in back there. The F7 does the same exact thing. So it's nice seeing a bit of variety. It's very simple. Uh, it's, it's literally just, you know, you, you choose your timetable um, run that you want to do with the color locomotive and that's it and then you'll see other ai trains that'll use the the black or the gray variant on either locomotive so a uh, very nice mod here there's there's some other mods out there as well for clinchfield railroad that i've done in the past that i think are that i that i stink i probably do stink i sweated quite heavily today uh that i think are still available for trains in world three such as uh, different sounds uh for the sd40s um uh another mod which which uh carries like some some different decals and things like that uh which i'll try and find the link below and and they should work if they don't 
they just haven't been updated and it is what it is uh so anyway segueing perfectly into the next mod is a mod by uh, rob s and it's the diesel exhaust mod now this again is a very simple mod as far as installing it it's a pack file you slap it in your dlc folder you're done and it applies to every as far as i know it applies to every single diesel powered locomotive within train sim world and it affects the exhaust as uh you know if you've not noticed uh it makes it a lot more normal looking the color has been changed uh a hair as well as the shape so before you know exhaust would always kind of seem to have this stupid like v-shaped thing going on for it uh most notably you could tell with the uh like the hst the class 43 for example which it uh applies to that as well like i said i think it literally applies to any diesel powered locomotive uh within train sim world so this one here already looks very nice it's got kind of like an oily uh smoke color to it which uh you know like some of the seals and rings are starting to wear out on some of these engines and it's just uh you know blowing smoke if you will it's a lot less pronounced so it looks a little bit more realistic uh very nice overall mod that uh just changes the effect of exhaust as well as nighttime so before if you were to choose nighttime you could still see the exhaust it was a bit ridiculous so we'll go ahead and change it to nighttime we'll do uh we'll do 1 a.m and voila there you go you no longer see brightly colored stacks of exhaust you can still kind of see it um, you know, this is one of the older routes, so the lighting is a little bit different with the older Clinchfield route and some other, you know, Train Some World 2 routes. Um, but it's not as crazy. It's not as prominent. It just looks a whole, whole hell of a lot better. It's still there, but it is a, uh, a bright, starry, uh, clear night. So that is a very damn cool mod, and uh, I believe Rob has been updating this uh, fairly often. This is probably the second or third update that I've put into my game um, you know for this he's, he's been tweaking it apparently but it looks pretty damn good so far all right I am a bit geeked about this one next up is the BR 182 enhancement pack now this is from a lot of the same people that made the BR 101 enhancement pack as well as the ICE one which were both in freaking credible probably some of the best mods in my opinion to ever grace anything train sim world in any iteration of its three separate pointless titles uh the 182 enhancement pack so of course you're going to need the 182 dispelock loco add-on which is the newer uh, 182 because I know we've gotten like 500 over the years uh, this is derived from the 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 little three loco add-on it came with a stupid SD 70 uh, the the ROG thing uh, 30 class 37 and then the 182 disc block uh, so you're gonna need that to be able to use this pack so the authors of this are Folids, Fubian, Raf, and Redstonia uh as so far so you're going to get five new variants which is the uh viner local bonin evb box express rail for kim and a db cargo variant as well as uh, flix train so you're also going to get new formations for freight and passenger there's going to be enhanced bits in the cab uh you know logos and emblems were applicable uh new headlights as well which i'm kind of geeked to look at i've not seen those yet and again it's fully integrated into pretty much any timetable that uses the dispelock 1a2 by default so you'll just see one of these at random which is very badass you don't have to just you know place it down and and use it that way you will just actually see them and again it's another pack file you just slap that bad boy into your dlc uh folder and you're done that's it we'll take a look at it in the menu here uh in a second but these things uh from where i'm standing so far look pretty damn spicy 
So I'm not going to go full Wikipedia on the Euro Sprinter. Uh, we're not here for that. We're here for the mod. But we'll go a little bit of Wikipedia. This is essentially the ES64U known as the Euro Sprinter. Part of the Euro Sprinter family. Uh, it's a dual-duty electric locomotive with a top speed of about 230 kmh. Uh, and known mostly for the lovely melodic tune uh, that they emit from the uh, the special kind of traction converters uh, that they have on board. Uh, but they're cool locomotives. They look awesome. I love the way these things look. Uh, there's different variations all over Europe. Uh, and shit, I think some, some places in Asia as well, maybe? Um, but but there's all kinds of different liveries for these things. Uh, the German ones that operate within Germany, uh, I think they can have dual mode, uh, or not dual mode, but dual uh, electricity uh, variants, um, you know, as far as like the kilovolt and all that, uh, AC power. Uh, I don't know what those are specifically, but I think they can operate on, on two different uh, types. But uh, they are some good-looking locomotives. Uh, first, we'll look at the Wiener Lokobahnen, which is this uh, gorgeous. There we go. Blue and white one on the left here. This thing looks gorgeous. I love the way this looks. Uh, the logo is cool. So Wiener Lokobahnen is a railway company out of Vienna. Uh, hence the Wiener or Weiner, however you say it. Uh, they operate uh, trains in the greater Vienna area. I think they operate some buses, too, and uh, some light rail, if I'm not mistaken, as well as, um, you know, these sexy some bitches. Uh, they got it straight up to the point. It looks good. Uh, you know, the, the, the coloring, the logo looks very nice. The lettering, the font all looks perfect. Uh, they've got the decals where applicable. You can see Siemens on the back there and then of course the kraus um or siemens kraus uh logo there on the front as well and other little bits and bobs uh all over just gorgeous gorgeous locomotive we're going to try and keep this speedily along here to take a look at each and every one but you can see a bit of weathering there on the side so it's not just a you know brand new fresh paint which is always nice brand new fresh paint looks good um, you know, but I, I've, I've got a, a particular taste for the dirty ones. And, uh, I like, I like the dirty ones. It looks good. Next up, we will look at EVB. Here's EVB right here in the middle. This is Eisenbahnen und, let me see if I get this right, Eisenbahnen und Verkupstrieb. Elbe Wesser, which is a transport company from Lower Saxony in Germany. They also operate buses uh, as well as trains here. And uh, again, this is kind of like, I forget what they call these. They call them like a, a like the advertisement series. So it's like the standard Dispolok, uh, you know, livery, the, the yellow and gray. And then they kind of throw their own, you know, logos in there. And again, this one looks very good. It's It's got the nice lettering and font where applicable and uh the evb logo which is pretty cool looks pretty sharp very nice and uh you know modern futuristic very popping color you'll definitely see that logo uh from a good distance nice looking locomotive next up we'll look at box express which is uh a very good looking one as well so again it's just another advertisement locomotive got the standard dispo lock yellow and gray it's almost like a tennis ball green. I don't know what to call it. We'll go to this side. A little bit sunnier. Again, looks good. The logo back there looks pretty damn nice. It is very, very sharp and crispy. Uh, and it, it lines up very nicely along the bottom and top as well. The font looks spot on. It's, uh, it's very, very primo. Uh, next up, we will look at... Yeah, we'll go ahead and look at the Flix train. So this sucker here, Flix train, is a railway company as part of the company 
that overall owns the Flix business, uh, including Flixbus, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of as well. They run pretty much all over Germany and touching uh, countries uh, all around Germany as well. Um, and it's a cool looking locomotive. It's very bright. I think they went with this green at some point to kind of uh, kind of play on the uh, the uh, gosh uh, anti global warming thing. Like uh, you know what's got what's it called? You know green. I'll just say green. Again, it looks very good. The color looks spot on. You can see a little green bit down there, which a lot of these don't have because it's not well green down there. As you can see, it looks totally different. Uh, all the little bits and bobs, decals, icons, all that good stuff are on there as well. It's got a little bit of weathering. This one seems a little bit more chunky, but uh, credit where credit's due, this is a beta. And the folks that created this list that as such on the page where you can go and find this sick ass, super dope enhancement pack. Um, you know, it's a work in progress. A lot of this stuff always is. They're always striving to make it better, as a lot of modders are, you know, whether it be bus sim, flight sim, train sim, whatever. So it's, you know, it's generally never, like, done, that's it. They're always, they're always fixing stuff. But, uh, cool-looking locomotive. Rail 4 Kim is the last one. These are known as, like, uh, mobile pipelines or something they call them because they essentially move... Uh, chemicals uh, from, geez, I want to say ports in the North Sea uh, throughout Germany. Uh, I think the company was absorbed into CapTrain um, several years ago, but this is this is how they looked uh, as it stood. And again, the the decals look very fresh and spicy, very crispy. Uh, I like the green and the yellow on there with the silver. It just looks very good. So you're gonna get five brand new, lovingly crafted paints, uh, and then of course, if you bring up the, if you've got the God mode as it's called, you bring up the timetable. Uh, you've got a random one down here. So if you're feeling a little fuzzy, like I often do, uh, and you don't know what to choose, you can just you know click one, and it'll uh, load it up, and then crash the game because I loaded it where a train was already sitting all right so after that little mishap we are back in uh just the random one that i chose which is the one out of vienna and uh, we're going to take a look at the lights and a couple of things inside the cab as well i'm not going to get every single little thing in the cab i don't know precisely what was changed i do know it was touched up little things added here and there uh you know like coffee cups coke cans uh, some of the things with the uh, the MFDs or the touch screens uh, or the soft key screens anyway, sorry, uh, were updated and fixed as well. But uh, most notably, something I wanted to take a look at is the lighting. So one of the biggest problems in Train Sim World is the lighting. It's like sometimes they just don't even try. And while, yes, you could say that about a lot of stuff within Train Sim World, and I'm talking about the standard devs, not, you know, the modders or the community if you will lighting is a big thing as well as sound physics all that right and it's typically just white like tissue paper toilet paper paper towel white unless you get the uh, reclaimed stuff and then your paper towels and toilet paper are like brown but that's weird I don't do that. That's just me. Anyway, the lights. You can already tell. They look a lot different. They look a lot more natural. They have that kind of orange, ambery glow. And it's currently daytime, so I'm going to get the environment settings set here. We'll put at 1 a.m. and have a peek at what they look like. There we go. I can see them a bit better now. I am in Hagen. Uh, on Rursi ignored probably one of my favorite German routes um, I like this route dearly and the the lighting is again a bit different between trains in world 2 and 3 routes So it, the lighting may not come through as great in this as say uh, one of the newer routes with a different kind of lighting But it looks pretty freaking good. It's it's not you know, these aren't very old trains um, But the lights look very nice. They're just a bit softer they're toned down some. They've kind of got that 
that you know orange peel color around the rim of the lens itself that looks very damn good very damn good we should see stuff like this by default in this game but dovetail never want to take the time you know to try and make lights look correct for whatever reason just dovetail things anyway let's get the uh the time back to oh, we'll do 10 a.m all right we'll do 17 hunted there we go a little bit of front light look at that that some bitch looks good man that's a good looking locomotive we'll get in the cab here so some things were spiced up um, so on occasion when you load some of these in you'll get like a coffee cup or a coke can sitting over there let's try that again there we go over here in the, where's it at where's the holder right there uh, I did not get one sadly um, I think these screens were swapped so that screen used to be over here and that screen used to be over here something to that effect I don't truly know what all was changed cab wise uh, it looks it looks a little more fresh this definitely looks a little different something just I don't know something seems different about this general vicinity uh, I wish I knew but I know they did uh, update some things in the cab but what exactly I don't know I guess I haven't spent enough time with my face on the desk of one of these things to to notice uh, certain things like that but uh, I think that'll about do it for the 182 enhancement pack portion of this program um, now there is a sound enhancement for this now I don't think the sounds are all that bad by default this is probably one of the best German locomotives that uh, that have come out for train sim world hands down uh, it sounded pretty good it's it's got that nice you know musical tone that they do it sounds fairly correct uh, but I know there was a sound mod that was created some time ago but I do not know if that applies to this uh, 182 the Dispolock 182 I think that sound mod applied to the other 182 the MRCE or the DB or whichever the hell one there's like 5,000 of them now um, it'd be very cool if it did apply to this one but you know we'll see what is that noise all right keep forgetting this is a, a live active area but that is the 182 enhancement pack available now i'm sure it'll still uh see some tweakage uh in the coming you know days weeks months whatnot you can find it down below uh linked as usual these are some awesome packs i mean frick man we got this thing the ice and the 101 like big wow i like
Okay, and lastly for today, looking at the enhancements of uh, May 2023 uh, for this video is uh, something very neat as well. You may be thinking, uh, oh, Shani Bonsky, why do you have two Clinchfield Railroad timetables? Well, because one of them is a mod, and it includes turning this place into the CSX Kingsport subdivision. So what it does is, again, it's a... It's what's great about these mods of Train Sim World. It's, you know, Train Sim Classic, you got to do some things sometimes that, you know, a lot of people may not be comfortable with, myself included. You got to make backups, all this other crap. With Train Sim World, at least, and it's, you know, in the, it, the very least, it's simple to install mods. You just throw the pack file in your DLC folder, and that is it. You're done. So, this is a full CSX timetable that's added to the Clinchfield Railroad because the Clinchfield Railroad became owned and operated, of course, by CSX Transportation, and it was known as the CSX Kingsport Subdivision. So if you've got the Clinchfield Railroad and you've got Sam Patch Grade, which, of course, most everybody does because it came with a base game, uh, you know, years ago. I don't even know if it does now, totally honest. Uh, but you can get it pretty cheap on sale. And then if you've got like the Dash 8 and that uh, that that friggin' SD40 add-on, uh, I forget what it's called. It adds all of that. And it adds a bunch of modern freight, uh, North American rolling stock as well, freight cars. So that's pretty damn cool as well because you'll see all kinds of different stuff. So you've got your standard... Clinchfield timetable on here. So if you use this, you're just going to see stuff from this area. You're not going to see new CSX stuff as because that's appropriate. You've got the F7 and the SD40, two totally separate timetables. Over which you've got SD40 CSX. So you've got like the box car logo, uh, YN2 or hockey stick, uh, AC4400 CW, uh, GP38-2, SD40-2, uh, and then the Dash 8 as well. And these all take the place of this stuff. And it's like the same kind of deal. It's, it's pretty neat. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. And here we are. We're on the CSX Kingsport subdivision, which used to be the, ah, that. I don't think I have a sound mod in that, so we're going to run away. This is now the CSX Kingsport subdivision, which, of course, took over the Clinchfield Railroad. As you can see, this mixed freight, all kinds of different cars here. CSX box cars. You got the Rock Hopper tanks you got one of the uh, norfolk southern cars of course you are going to need all the appropriate uh, add-ons to get all this rolling stock uh you've got some empty center beams up there which is kind of it's kind of frowned upon in railroading if i'm not mistaken empty center beams up front like that <laughs> uh I, th I think these locomotives are going to run around though but it's got all kinds of different stuff, which is neat. It's got the CN thrown in there from the very shitty uh, Oakville subdivision. Uh, and, of course, trying to catch up with his train here. Different locomotives all lashed up there. Um, so that's what you'll see. We'll go down to the little yard here. Of course, we've got uh, CSX coal gone sitting everywhere because it's still coal country. Uh, sort of to this day. It's mainly for... for through freight nowadays but there's a yard down here all kinds of csx engines sitting here and uh again this doesn't mess up the original clinchfield railroad not by any means this is a totally different timetable now yes the period may not quite be right you know some of the the you know the infrastructure all around is not gonna be obviously super modern 
Uh, but early year CSX, sure, yeah, super modern, nah, not by a long shot. Uh, this mod is by Triple J814, and again, it's available, uh, which I will link down below, and you literally just slap it in, Dunzo Magunzo, you can run CSX on uh, Clinchfield, which is pretty cool, because it breathes, you know, some new life into the old Clinchfield. Um, you know, and, and route-wise, I think it's one of the better-looking uh, North American routes, um, you know, for freight. There's not many, but it, you know, it does look okay i you know i kind of dig it a little bit as usual rolling stock could always be a little bit better but uh it includes everything so the csx uh kingsport sub is kind of mothballed by today's standard i think there's still through freight that goes through i don't know what's going on with it honestly and truly 100 percent nowadays uh if you do please chime in uh down below as always but uh, it's, it used to be the Clinchfield. So it's a 133-mile line owned and operated by CSX Transportation through Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Uh, it obviously, CRR, be became part of the CSX's Florence uh, division, I think in like 2016, running from Elkhorn City in Kentucky to Irwin, Tennessee. Um, so the, f the former Clinchfield Railroad is like the northern half of uh of this sub if i'm not mistaken so in in around the same time the area was kind of closed and or mothballed and since uh you know trains have still come and run through uh the area so you know trains still do come through here if i'm not mistaken i think the uh the what's that big ass yard uh la, 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 la. the irwin yard i think the irwin yard was closed uh, along with the facility, which also killed a lot of jobs, several hundred jobs there. And um, so that, that kind of killed traffic on this as well. But it's it's super easy. You just pick your train and go. Uh, that's it, guys. Kingsport sub mod. Very cool full timetable. I mean, before people did make some, some scenarios where you could, like, run some CSX on Clinchfield, a.k.a. Kingsport. And uh, that was nice and great and well. But uh, now you've got a full-ass timetable so uh neat mod indeed but that's it for now guys uh hope you found the video somewhat informative and uh i'll catch you next time take care out there guys see you later